Any additions or changes to the agenda? No. Agenda. Uh, I don't have anything to really report here. We don't have a budget report because we haven't set the budget yet. There's been no activity in the student activity fund, so we just have the minutes and the bills. Okay. Those are all sent out by package. Does so everyone get a chance to review them? If not, the PDF on your laptop there. Entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. I move. I second it. Move and second it to approve the consent agenda. All, all in favor, right hand. Vote same sign. Motion carried 5 0. Any patron comments? Okay. Move on to the business portion of the meeting, the library budget. Um, on uh, page 19 of your supporting documents file, as a reminder, if you just touch on the screen, you look at the top of the documents and you'll find the supporting documents. Just speak up if you have questions on where to find something. Page 19 is the budget. This is typically how it's been presented and uh, the way it's presented now. Uh, we have some things that run through the general fund and some things that run through the 72 fund and some of the grant funds and our foundation funds flow through that. Uh, it's difficult to see where everything comes from and this budget here doesn't include all of the expenses for the library. So our plan is to move everything into the general fund, the 06 fund, and just have everything there try to portion out our uh, utilities and uh, maintenance and those things as we can. Uh, and then we'll have the obvious direct expenses and salaries and some of these things that are on here. So um, I'm gonna let Christy talk a little bit about, uh, about the budget and uh, a few other things about the library. Well, um, <coughs> Christy like uh, Mr. Meyer said, it's it's basically what it what it has been. Um, you can see there were some places we went over budget. Um, that Sickles grant typically is just our summer staff, um, and we just got some other um, salaries taken out of that. So in the district office we how we code those salaries. So that's not all the summer libraries. Yeah. Um, and I just uh, <laughs> shifted things around a little bit up with the meals and lodging. It, it took more than uh, we thought it was going to. So um, I really, let's see. Um, the other was miscellaneous and uh, we had, we just had a lot of programming this year um, that went over budget a little bit. But then you can see there were places we didn't use much at all. So it pretty well comes out in the end. But if you have any questions about, you know, that spending, I'd be happy to find out what those things were. Um, pretty close on our book budget. And we kept that same, the same for next year. Um, we get grant money from the um, South Central Kansas Library System. And uh, that uh, actually 
increased, we were very pleasantly surprised, and uh, they're going to try to keep that steady. The state aid, when I turn in all my stats, um, then <coughs> when you do that, you're rewarded with state aid money, and I usually use that for our videos and audiobooks, um, and it's been going down the last few years. Um, and then the foundation money. And this is where we talked with the foundation board and the library board about increasing those, the foundation funds. One thing you don't see in here is the contribution from the city. Uh, that flows through a different area. Right? Not all the expenses are on this budget. Not all of the revenue is on this budget either. Um, so our hope is to clean that up so we do see it all in a general fund. And it's much more clear to everybody yeah. about what's going where. And the, the library board is just thrilled that that's going to happen. It's, it's a lot easier to answer questions from the public when all that's together. So. so next year when we do the same thing, we should see all of these line items mm -hmm. uh, for the actual costs and all the revenue. And the city did vote for, uh, including their budget, uh, an additional one mil for revenue there, uh, which is which is a great situation. Um, we're in a position where we can't increase our mill levy uh, to fund anything we want, uh, other than our capital outlay, and uh, and our mill levy is dropping. And you know the city has that choice where they can uh, change theirs and raise the funds as they need to. So. I and the, appreciate that a lot. Yeah, they, they've always given us the ad valorem tax, and they had increased it to 16000 over the last couple of years. And uh, so when Josh went to visit with them this year, well, it was like they're hoping for 25000 Is that correct? 25000 uh, No, it wasn't that mm -hmm. much. Uh, more like 20. More than 20. Yeah. I think it was levied at uh, three mills in the past, increased it by one. Does that sound right? Yes. Okay. So their contribution is going from where to? Uh, roughly 16 to 20, something in that range. And it usually went into uh, the overhead, you know, paid for it and help help the district pay for utilities. So in this budget, we're not seeing all the revenue that we should be seeing, right? And we're not seeing or all of the expenses. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, now we have that in a separate area in our general fund. Um, we, <coughs> I just yeah. don't deal with it. So what what? What this is basically is the education foundation money came from Mrs. Goodman and her friends trust funds that went into the education foundation and those funds were designated for materials. And uh, so that's basically what I deal with. So instead of just spending that on materials, now we can use you know, those funds for any operation expense, whether it's materials or salaries and utilities, any of that. And what we do with the budget like this, we just pull some more out of that fund. Is that where the fund comes from? Well, basically, I stayed within the confines, even though, but yeah, if I probably went way over, it would probably come out of the education foundation. But I really didn't go out yeah. of my box there. I just, we should. Questions for Christy? Thank you. Mr. President, I move the board approve the library budget as presented. 
Second. So moved and seconded to approve the library board budget as presented. All in favor, right hand. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5-0. I'm out of here. Special education assessments. I just wait in case you guys make a change your budget. I have to pull the paper back from the press and change it. So, uh, if, you can, if you make a change, it's going to cost you dearly. Well, 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 fast. <laughs> if you make a change, you're going to owe me really, really big. Time. What's this worth to you? Yeah. Uh, our special education assessments. Um, you know, in total, we pay about 508000 or we will this year, uh, to the Special Education Cooperative. Uh, 363000 of that is state aid, which just flows through our district. Um, it comes into our general fund from the state. We transfer that to our special education fund, and we send it right on to the co-op. Uh, so we, we can't use it at all for anything. Uh, it just increases the size of our budget. Um, the remainder of that, about 145000 is just paid from our local district budget. Uh, that's not, you know, it's provided, I guess, in general state aid, but um, that's to cover all the expenses for, uh, for the cooperative, for the teachers, the legal fees, uh, all of those things related to special education costs. Uh, it is an increase, which we knew was coming, uh, about 12% increase of about 15000 on our uh, local contribution. Uh, some of that is due to our higher enrollment because as you see on page 20 of your supporting documents, you can see the uh, percentage that we pay of the overall assessment that they collect from all of the districts in the cooperative. It's based on enrollment, on last year's enrollment. So since our enrollment was higher, our contribution goes up a little. But a lot of, most of that is just because they increased the overall assessment because of the budget shortfall they've had uh, and uh, the trouble they're having there with their costs. Um, page 21 is the scheduled payments and how that comes through. So we really don't have an option here, uh, but we do need to approve this. The total amount is on your sample motion there. Anybody have any questions? No. Any questions? All right, here, take a motion. Mr. President, I move we approve the hundred and forty five thousand fifty four dollars and forty eight cents. Second that. I move and second it to approve the SCK SCC assessment. For the 2013-14 year, all in favor, right hand. Let's sign. Motion carried. Yeah, carried. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. No. No. That it yet? No. 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 I can't tell you how long we've done uh, a few years. Uh, we share uh, Kim Volker, elementary counselor, and Rita Suter for Spanish with uh, Stafford. We employ Rita Suter. The uh, Stafford pays half of their of her salary to us, and the same applies with uh, Kim Volker on the reverse. They, they employ her, and we pay half the salary. Each district provides the mileage for the, for the teacher that's traveling. So. I recommend we continue with that. I assume that staff would be staff would be Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, I move we <laughs> approve the continuation of sharing agreement with USD 249 for the elementary counselor and foreign language teacher. Second. We move and second it to approve the continuation of sharing of teachers with USD 349. Is there any discussion? Not all in favor, right hand. Both same sign. Motion carried, 5 0. 
budget for publication. You have your proposed budget on page 22 of the supporting documents. You also have a file, uh, a paper file there at your, at your area. And uh, I want to go over a couple of things here. Just to make sure we're all on the same page with the budget. I want to look quickly at our, our cash balances on your uh, documents on your on your iPad. There is a file for cash balances. We will report this on our uh, on our website. We're required to report that. Um, One thing you might notice is on our bond and interest on our cash balance, uh, we have 411000 as of July 1. That will uh, pretty much all go away. So we will show a huge drop in cash balance. So it's going to look like we've, uh, we're carrying over a lot less cash than we have been, which is true, but uh, we don't need it anymore. Uh, so you can see at the almost all the way down the amount per pupil that list there, we report that. So what does all that mean? Really when we look at selected funds, what we can really spend, uh, we dropped, and this, this is all based on preliminary numbers. So I would remind you we thought it was a lot worse than it was until after our audit and uh, shuffled some things around. So we lost in total of, uh, you know, a little over 40,000 in our spending, our spendable cash balance. So we fully expend our general fund and our supplemental general fund, and we transfer it to other funds. So we have our contingency fund, and then we have some other funds we can lose some money. So that downward trend, uh, we need to change. It's no different than we really knew last year. Uh, but we're still in a comfortable spot, you can see, uh, compared to 2008, 2009. Another important thing to look at, though, is if we compare that to the size of our general fund. So over the years, our budget has declined because we've lost enrollment. So the dollar amount doesn't always make, make a lot of sense to look at. It's important to look at the percentage of the general fund. So we don't always need the same dollar amount. If our budget gets smaller, we don't need quite as much. So again, the same picture there, we're still significantly higher than than we were a few years ago. But again, we still have that same downward trend in our cash balance. So the, uh, <clears throat> the notice of hearing, uh, the paper sheet, and it's also on your iPad there, that's our uh, published budget as is. Keep in mind that this budget is the district's authority to spend the money. It shows us how much we can expect from the state uh, for operations. Uh, and then behind the scenes, we develop the working budget after this is all approved. And looking at how, how we are, uh, are we within budget, or where do we need to cut back uh, during the year and ongoing. So uh, that doesn't necessarily tell you everything. Uh, one item would be capital outlay. We, we budget most of of our total budget authority that's possible there. Now we do that in case we need to use it. Uh, if we have a, a disaster, if we have a, you know, a boiler goes down, we need to have that authority to spend that money. If we don't budget it, we can't spend it, even if we have it. So even though we don't expect to spend all of that, we still budget that. Our valuation was down slightly, about 1.6% just over 43 million or just under 43 million. Uh, in simple terms, you know, the higher the valuation, the lower the value, and, uh, and vice versa. The higher the valuation, the fewer minutes it takes to raise the same amount of money. Uh, but property values overall increased. A lot of that loss was, really virtually all of the loss was due to gas and oil uh, valuation in the district. 
total property values went up, the gas and oil got that total down. So our mill levy is driven by four funds historically. Uh, this year we'll only have three uh, because our bond and interest, we will not levy any taxes for that. We're going to pay that off. Uh, two funds are levied for the Recreation Commission. And keep in mind, we budget the dollars. We don't budget the mills. We say this is the amount of dollars, and then our mill levy is, is uh, estimated based on that. Um, for us, one mill generates about $43,000 in tax revenue. Historically, our mill levy, <clears throat> the general fund is always 20 mills. It doesn't change. That's a requirement in the, in the state of Canada. The supplemental general, the LOB, fluctuates. I'll talk more specifically about those funds. Uh, capital outlay, we have authority to go up to eight, uh, and it can be from zero to eight. And typically, this has fluctuated based on what these others would do to try to hold the melody fairly steady. And the bond and interest you can see would be zero this year based on this budget that I'm proposing to publish. And overall, uh, about nine tenths, just over nine tenths of the mill uh, will be reduced overall. The general fund, again, 20 mills for all districts. Most districts don't collect enough to cover all of the general fund. There's a few districts in the state, uh, Burlington, where their 20 mills is more than they can spend in their general fund. They send the rest of the state and uh, give it to the rest of us. For us, it generates about $812,000 in revenue. So the remainder of this, for the most part, of this total general fund budget is covered with by state aid. It's set by our enrollment numbers. Um, our, our enrollment plus our free and reduced lunch adds to that. Kids in vocational, the kids in transport, all those things add to that for a full-time equivalency, or FTE. And then the base state aid per pupil is $3,838 uh, this year. So you hear a lot of that in the legislative session, the base state aid, uh, it's the same number as it was last year. So our enrollment will stay fairly flat. Uh, it's anticipated in the base state aid. That gives us our general fund uh, at roughly that number. Okay. Now, you may notice that it, it's about 100000 or so less than last year. Now, we get reimbursements for some things. Some, uh, some people we have insurance, some employees, here's an example, uh, they, we pay for their insurance and they re reimburse the district. <coughs> if we uh, purchase uh, some things that have come from the Educational Foundation, we would purchase something and get a donation for that and get reimbursed for that. Um, Rita Suter's salary, we pay that and then we're reimbursed by uh, staffer. So that just increases our, our budget. So what you're seeing there is not a reduction, it just doesn't have those reimbursements in there. And there's also some special transfers where we can put money into the general fund. Our supplemental general fund is also called the local option budget. You'll hear both of those. Uh, this is set at 30% of the general fund budget. Sort of, there's some crazy math there that uh, legislators have figured out to try to make that bigger so uh, local taxpayers can pay more of that than uh, coming from the state. So if, if we set that at 30%, we can fluctuate that at whatever we need to. That sets the mill levy about 19 and a half. Um, last year's enrollment increase that we didn't anticipate, uh, th that's why this number is a little bit higher. And we had some cash left over in there, so it reduces our mill levy. So I said earlier, our valuation's down, but our mill levy isn't really going up hardly any with it. a larger increase. And that's because we did have some cash left over in there that helps reduce that. Uh, equalization. Um, some of the poorer districts in the state, uh, when you look at their valuation and how many kids they have, uh, it's tougher to raise. Uh, Burton is a good example. Their valuation is $18 million. So one mill raises $18,000 in taxes. One mill here is $43,000. Uh, so it's tougher for them to 
uh, raise the funds, they have to raise their mill levy a lot to get the same amount of dollars as some of the richer districts as far as valuation. <clears throat> so some, some districts, uh, the state pays part of this fund to make up for that. Well, they only prorate that. They don't give all of it, as state statute says. So sometimes you may hear that in the in the press that when they're talking about that, uh, local districts are having to make that up. So some of our neighboring districts have higher mill levies because the state is not providing what's required by the laws that they set. That doesn't apply to us, though. So we don't have to worry about it. It doesn't help us out at all. Capital outlay, this is just used for facilities, vehicles, equipment. Uh, we can pay for repairs and improvements to buildings, but we can't pay for repairs to equipment or repairs to vehicles. We can purchase the vehicle, but if we pay to repair it, it has to come out of general fund or somewhere else. Uh, it's spelled out pretty specifically what we can use this money for. Uh, we pass a resolution. Once every five years is typical, uh, so we can levy up to eight mills, and that changes each budget year when it really set. Uh, this budget that I'm recommending is set at eight mills. <clears throat> Why do we need the full eight mills? We have a lot of large expenses, uh, or a, a few large expenses coming up uh, that we need to pay for. Uh, right there, those three things, a roof, a track, uh, HVAC system over here estimated is roughly half a million dollars right there. Uh, continued improvements with our technology uh, purchases, uh, updating vehicles, uh, just general facilities upgrades, carpet, <coughs> and those things that we're doing some of, uh, and any other future capital needs. Uh, we can lower this. It doesn't have to be eight mils. We have to pay for these things some. I believe it's a good time to do that. We're still lowering the mill levy overall uh, by almost one mill. Our bond and interest fund, again, this, our cash carryover is good enough to pay, uh, pay what we have left to pay on that. We have a scheduled payment for principal and interest this year, and next year's payment that's due in 2015, we have the cash there to pay that. So uh, I've notified the treasurer's office to call those bonds, so we'll be paying those off here uh, next month. Those will be paid off and we'll be done with it. We will have about 55000 left over after we pay all of the principal and interest. Uh, we will have some uh, residual taxes that come in next year, even though we're not levying taxes. So that will sit there, and then we need to decide what to do with that. We can leave it here in that fund if we anticipate having bond and interest payments in the future, in the near future, we can leave it there and use that as seed money. Or we can move it to capital outlay and use it however we need to in that fund. So those are our two options. But it will sit there for about a year uh, to make sure we get it all, all the taxes collected in there and we're done with it. <clears throat> a lot of the budget, you see a lot of the funds on there. I just really went through the ones that that we levy taxes for, but mostly the monies flow into the general fund and the supplemental general fund. We transfer out of that and we spend, th spend that money accordingly for special ed, for vocational, and those things. We don't all just spend it out of the general fund. It goes to another fund and then it's spent there. And one thing you need to consider on the budget, transfers count as expenditures. So it's almost like we count it twice. If we transfer from the general fund $100,000 and spend that $100,000 out of the vocational fund, it's counted as $200,000 expenses. So one of the lines on there you'll see is less transfers. That's what that's all about. So the amount of transfers we have, we'll just back that out so you see what the actual expenditures are. And I mentioned the capital outlay budget. Uh, it's set at pretty much the maximum we could spend, but we don't anticipate spending all of that. Food service is another one. Uh, we don't want to run short there. Uh, we need to be able to spend that money. So we estimate high on that budget. We don't expect to spend all of that. 
The information that we'll have for the public will be this notice of hearing that'll go in the paper on Wednesday. Uh, that cash balances form that I showed you. And the form 150 shows all the enrollment and calculations. The budget at a glance is another document that we'll put on our website. Uh, that's fairly confusing because this budget isn't, uh, with a lot of the things I've talked about, isn't necessarily what we expect to spend or what we're going to spend. So we're comparing uh, this budget that uh, isn't really what we're going to spend compared to what we do spend. So some of this may create more confusion. And then I have that budget document uh, that provides that information for our district. Uh, once we have our audit, I'll update all those numbers. But uh, I'm kind of biased, but I think that's your best bet to look at some information if you need to uh, understand this. The point is, you don't need to understand all of these things. Um, understand the basics, what I've got over here. Uh, there's a lot of information in these things. They'll be on your website. You may have somebody ask about it. You don't have to know all about these, uh, every in and out of the budget. That's what you pay me for. So if you have any questions on uh, any of those things at any time, uh, as always, I can answer them. <clears throat> Mr. Byron, as he alluded to, he did put together that packet that breaks down the budget and shows where everything goes, and it's really good. It is on our website. Uh, I know we've got new people seeing it. Yeah, it is under our, uh, the budget information. Again, that's not updated for this year's numbers. We'll, have, we'll do that after the audit when we make sure we have everything after the budget is published. So uh, over here under budget information on the website, it's there. Uh, we'll need to uh, publish this budget. Uh, and this paper needs to, uh, and then we need to give 10 days before we can hold the hearing which we, my recommendation would be August 19th. We need to set a special meeting for August 19th and hold the hearing and approve that budget at that time. Did you have a question? No. Uh, no. Okay. No. <laughs> no, I was just telling him it's done. It's there. Oh. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Any questions about the budget? President, I'll move the board approve the budget for publication. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded to approve the budget for publication. Any further discussion? Not all in favor, right hand. Those same sign. Motion carries by vote. KASB policy recommendations. I will try to be very brief here. Um, you guys all read through all of these policies, right? I, uh, this, uh, I, I will have specific recommendations on these for the next, uh, at the next meeting, but what's typical with policies is we see in one meeting and have time to review them and uh, approve them at the next meeting. KASB puts out recommendations which uh, may or may not fit what we have here in our district. Um, the way they lay that out, you have them on uh, uh, one from June and one from February. Actually, it says in uh, January on here. But, uh, uh, the January or February on there, whatever, uh, <clears throat> policies, there's not a lot here that is uh, a lot of it updates. Uh, it's just some wording and legal updates. I don't really have anything to point out specifically on this one. The June updates, uh, there are some things of note here. Um, the FC policy relates to memorials and naming of district facilities. I know we've had things like that in the past. Um, their recommendation is to limit that as much as possible um, for uh, two reasons. One is that uh, not to focus on on death in the school setting and uh, uh, to avoid any issues of you know, if you had somebody uh, killed you know, drunk 
driving accident, accident for instance, uh, due to their own fault, and, uh, do we name a memorial for somebody like that who's made a poor choice? Uh, you know, it, it, you have some tough issues there. And their recommendation is always to uh, uh, encourage people to put that in the scholarships rather than naming the facilities. So that, that's one thing you, you may want to take a look at. Um, bullying by staff uh, is another one that's part of the bull new bullying uh, laws. There's also one in here about bullying by parents. Uh, we have to have a policy prohibiting parents from bullying anybody at school. That would be a tough one to uh, 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 hold them. Uh, emergency safety interventions. This has to do with seclusion and restraint. If a student is uh, uh, presenting, a, uh, presenting a danger to himself or the school or other people, uh, and we have to restrain that student, uh, we need to report that. We always have. Uh, we don't really deal with it much at all. Uh, if we have to seclude the student, a lot of this comes into play with special ed students. Uh, if a kid has a severe disability, uh, and it becomes a danger and you have to hold, hold the child. How does that happen? Uh, and there have been incidents of uh, uh, severe injuries uh, because of that. So we have, we have to adopt a policy. It's required. Uh, we'll be training on some of that uh, during our opening in service. Uh, bottom line is if, if that happens, we have to report it to parents within two days. And then we have to report it to the state once a quarter which we always have had to report those things to the state. We just haven't had those incidents. So, uh, it's not going to be a major issue for us, but I did want to make sure you're aware of the policy. Uh, the GACCA policy has to do with nepotism, which would be hiring a board member's family. Uh, in a district our size, it's hard to get away from that. We, we need to utilize that. So make sure you take a look at that. Uh, that policy and how that fits with us. A lot of this, the rest of this is really just uh, <clears throat> legal stuff, changing from uh, the division of, uh, from SRS to DCF, you know, social services to the division of child and, uh, children services. So that's all I have on that. You have questions on those policies, let me know. Any questions for Mr. Dollar? Classified <coughs> staff, administrator pay. Um, Contract negotiations, uh, this total salary increase was less than a percent. It was about 0.7%. Uh, I recommend applying that same percentage to classified staff members and uh, Mr. Bergen. Uh, it'll cost us about $6,500. Total salary increase would be about 15000 across the board for that 0.7% increase. Uh, it's not a lot if we can afford to do more. I would say do it. So my recommendation is to raise it by 0.7%. Mr. President, I move the board approve a 0.7% for Mr. Bergen and classified staff. Second. Good and second. The approval is at 0.7%. Mr. Morgan, all classified staff members, any discussion? If not, all in favor, right hand. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5-0. Football sound system. Uh, maybe I should probably call it the basketball sound system because that's what we're using up there now. Exactly. We've got the old uh, uh, system from the gym, from the high school gym up there at the football field now. That's good. Yeah. 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 We just put it up there. Oh. Here. 
a few months ago. To get by because the other one was cracked out. So, uh, you all know we need to do something there, and uh, you, know, you can't hear from the concession stand. But it, sometimes it's almost pointless to use it for some of our track meets because you can't hear it clear out at the, the field events. And, uh, so we're in desperate need of upgrading and uh, um, doing a little more there. I was a little surprised at how much this uh, is going to cost us. But uh, I had electronic contracting, uh, they're the outfit that, that has done our, uh, the work on our, <coughs> our bell system, intercom system. Um, they're out of Wichita. They do a lot of uh, security systems, camera systems, a lot of those things. Uh, they've been good to work with. Uh, they got me a bid. I've called the people that did the sound system in the high school gym, and uh, I called them first, actually, before I called this electronic contracting company. It took a long time to get the bid, and I had to call back. And I think they contract out with an individual that does some work. Um, I think it would be okay. His bid came in at, uh, at 13343 The bid from elect electronic contracting is $15,837. Uh, I feel a lot more comfortable going with the electronic contracting uh, company, even though it is more. Uh, they included their wireless microphones uh, in with their bid where the $13,000 bid from Sound Solutions does not include that, so we would have extra cost there. Um, I worry about this being an individual with Sound Solutions just kind of on his own and uh, what kind of service will we get. I feel pretty confident with electronic contracting. They're going to be around for a long time to service the equipment. We know who to contact. Uh, I've had enough of those things ongoing that I don't know who to call to repair this or that. And having somebody reputable to do it, I think, is in their best interest. So I guess two questions there. Uh, do we spend the money? And, uh, and number two is if we, if we do, who do we go with? Uh, my recommendation is to do that. It will come out of capital outlay. Uh, we've got it in the budget to do that. Um, it needs to be done. Um, the electronic contracting will be putting three speakers on each pole by the home bleachers. There will be no speakers on the visitor side. Uh, one speaker on each pole would point to the visitor side, one speaker would point to the bleachers, and one speaker would point out in the concession stand, right to the east or to the west. So we're all off away from the one, from the two poles. And there wouldn't be a problem with the visitors here? No. I'm not sure that. What's the difference between those one at the 25,000 or something? Yeah. Um, some of that is, is the, the board that they have. Uh, you can shut off certain speakers. So I think more bells and whistles um, and more powerful speakers, uh, maybe a higher grade of speakers. Right. So my recommendation would be to go with electronic contracting for the fifteen thousand eight hundred thirty-seven. I don't have a problem with that recommendation, but I got a question. Didn't our bells and stuff quit this last year? No. And did it take a long time to get them fixed? Or what what was the thing? We we had uh, what was the gentleman's name? Oh, yeah. Don. Don. Can't remember his last name now. Yeah. We had we had a guy to call that knew the old system mm -hmm. and everything was in his brain and that's what took so long. And then we had to find somebody else that worked on the stuff and get them in. This electronic contracting company came in and. And we did. Yes. And oh, okay. So that's, who yeah, they that's not who we had when it <laughs> well, worked. They couldn't no. fix okay. the old one. Right. No. I was just, I was just yeah. worried about that. Yeah. So that's a completely new system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. New guy. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Don't think that. And the guy knew what he was doing. Yeah. 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 No doubt about it. It took a long time to build that.
<laughs> and that's my fear with something like that. I, I don't know that the sound solution will be that way, but uh, I get the feeling that's... We'd have a wireless mic uh, that can be used all over the field for presentations or if uh, uh, we had a fishing crew last year that wanted to, wanted to call the game on the headset and the capability to do that. So the recommended motion would be for electronic contracting. The amount is fifteen thousand eight hundred thirty-seven. Um, and when I had talked to him before, um, if, if he knew by July fifteenth he could add it in before the first game, so I don't know that we'll be there for the first game. Uh, we'll get as quick as we can. We'll get the phone tomorrow. We'll see how quickly we can get that done. Mr. President, I'm going to work through the bid from uh, electronic contracting the amount of $15,837. Is there a second? I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded to approve the bid amount of $15,837 for electronic contracting to replace the football sound system. Any discussion? All in favor, right hand. Both same sign. Motion carries 5-0. Mr. No added agenda items. Move on down to communications. Board member activities and reports. Start with Mr. Baer. I don't have any at this time. Supposed to attend the library board meeting, but I didn't make it, so I don't know if you know I attended the library board meeting, Tom missed, <laughs> and uh, we just went over the budget and, and uh, talked a little bit. We might need to do some upgrades on the air conditioning at some point. So, uh, we'll maybe concern, and she would like an elementary. Person and the teacher, the library, but now they want to speed it up. That is it. Mr. Woodward, no report. And myself, Tim Wood. South Central Education Co op board meeting in July. Um, there are some issues down there, there are some challenges. With the budget, the overall funding has decreased for the last several years. Uh, we're down to about two million for our fund, and if the trend continues, we've got two more years. So, it will change. It look like our expenditures to me. Uh, so we got some challenges to work on this one year. Administrative reports. Start with Mr. Berger. <clears throat> we didn't have uh, reports this month, but okay. Do have anything? To add? Yeah. I think yeah. First four or five days, and then pretty pretty set. All right. Uh, <clears throat> student coming from Brad. First few days have been uh, been good, just getting 
getting everybody back in the building and all the staff and, and principals. And Travis has been busy with the schedule, trying to get that all lined out. Had some shuffling to do. Uh, it said our enrollment is Thursday from 12 to 7. Our first day with kids will be the 22nd. Uh, there's some enrollment information on our website. Uh, we sent out the newsletter uh, last week. Uh, preschool. Uh, we have a challenge with transportation there with our younger kids. Uh, if a student is four years old, they need to be in a booster seat in a uh, passenger vehicle. If they're in a suburban or minivan, uh, four years old to eight years old, I believe they need to be in a booster seat. Under four, they need to be in a regular child safety restraint seat. Buses are exempt from those rules. Uh, the state recommends that we still provide that if the bus has seat belts. If there's no seat belts, you can't attach the child seat to anything. So um, there will be some challenges to work through with those three year olds in our preschool. Um, as far as, you know, when the bus pulls up, the kid gets on, well, you have to put the bus in park and get out of the seat, which is a dangerous situation, or the parents are going to have to get on and help strap the student in. So those are some of our growing pains with uh, the new setup. But we're going to try to commit to transport every, every kid that's uh, outside of the district. Uh, that brings to mind another issue, though, is uh, we may reach the point where we're just full, where we have uh, too many kids in each class to take them all. <coughs> so the plan would be uh, our priority is, of course, the four-year-olds. And then from there, uh, we'll move by age. So if, if there's a different consensus from the board, we can look at that. To me, that makes the most sense. Uh, we need to take all the students with an IEP, which are special ed students that uh, have an identified need. Uh, we have to take those kids uh, regardless. So. Three or four year old. Yeah. How many students can you take? Um, really, 14 in each class uh, is getting to be a lot, which would be 53. So we're right about there now. So Andrea did a lot of work last year to try to do some digging and try to find everybody so we knew ahead of time. <clears throat> we'll do our best there, but if we do end up at enrollment with, with way too many kids, we're going to have to do something. We can't afford to hire somebody else. So we'll do that that. But again, the priority is our four-year-olds getting them ready for kindergarten. Um, <clears throat> this year, our professional development, uh, we're going we're gonna to get out of the building for half a day on Friday, and uh, uh, the three administrators will go over our professional development schedule and new teacher evaluation tool, kind of a retreat to get away, um, work through some things without away from the building. But uh, so I guess for the most part, our focus is going to be on the technology in the classroom, continuing that with our iPads. We've got some TVs and, uh, that we can connect to in the, in the classroom. We've got six of those this year. Uh, we're moving away from using the projectors. Uh, it's really about the same money. And uh, I don't have to buy a $300 bulb for a uh, television. And so a lot of advantages there. Uh, it really works the same. So, continuing with our push on technology. Uh, math curriculum, as you know, we're working on that with those, our, our math, uh, math people. For eight days, we'll have that going on. Our new teacher evaluation tool, uh, we have that. Uh, that'll be a learning process for administrators and for teachers. Uh, I think that'll be a good situation, but that'll take some time. Uh, new accreditation model. And uh, school improvement plans, the principals will be working on those uh, plans if they have something in place by Christmas and their school improvement plans. And we work through a lot of things to improve every year. It's just we don't always get them on paper and say this is what we're trying to do and this is what we like to achieve. So uh, they'll be working on that this year. Um, our goal setting, uh, I would like that to be part of our budget meeting. We've got to get together anyway on Monday evening for our budget hearing at 7, then we approve the budget, 
and then we'd spend uh, roughly 90 minutes uh, talking about the year and establishing our goals for the year. Uh, what is this board going to see for the next 12 to 18 months, and maybe down the road? One thing we really need to look at is our capital improvements. What do we want to do with our facilities? Uh, we've got good facilities, but they're aging and needing some updates. So that would be one, one item we need to discuss. Just setting goals for me and for our administrators for our schools uh, for the year. So if the board is accept uh, up for that. That's not the uh, special report that we have here. Um, it might be. It is. I mean, have to skip it off. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> The Monsanto grant, I mentioned this some time ago, we applied for a $10,000 grant with uh, Monsanto for iPads and science lab equipment to go with the iPads for Mr. Delp's classroom. Found out we are a finalist for that and we should find out here at the end of the month on that. Uh, one thing that's not on your list here is our parents as teachers. Uh, Cheryl Foster works with our parents and their kids. Uh, have kids ages from birth up to five and getting them ready for preschool and into kindergarten. Uh, she has resigned. Uh, she'll be moving away. Uh, I believe we need to continue with that program. Dr. Taylor at Stafford does as well. That costs us about uh, $10,500 a year. A lot of, uh, some of that's paid for with grants and the remainder of it is split by Stafford and uh, us. So Stafford actually hires that person, so we'll be looking for a new person for that position. She's uh, expressed her gratitude for the board for supporting that program. In your uh, documents, there is a letter from her expressing her, her thanks for allowing her to work with our kids and families for the support. <coughs> The APTA fund, which is our financial software, uh, right now we have that on our computers. Uh, we have the software on our computers. We're moving to an online system. We talked about this about this time last year. It's just taken this long for them to schedule that. And they've been busy and uh, backed up. So that should happen end of September. In October. Last week of September for five days to first <coughs> payroll cut over. Also, some maintenance of facilities. Um, <clears throat> uh, we've got a list for every single classroom, a checklist of just general maintenance, and then another list that uh, goes along with that of some uh, updates or fixes that teachers have requested. So every area has their own list. Uh, so that's something we've put into place, and uh, all of the people in their area have those lists. Uh, the plan is that our September meeting will tour the facilities. Uh, once we have everything in place, and we'll, we'll go around and look. And, and just a general tour to highlight some things that have been done uh, over the past year. Uh, carpeting in our classrooms and the tile in the choir room is holding things up. I've, I've been very frustrated with the situation. Uh, it's taken a long time to get here. Got one room done today. Uh, we're doing six total. The choir room will have some tile. and then. Uh, five classrooms. One of those is moving Teresa Miller from the early ed building to 
the main classroom, which has been frustrating. So they're here. We'll get there. We ought to be done with that by the end of the week. Uh, some cabinets in the painting in that elementary science room that Teresa Miller is moving is also having things up. Um, the terrazzo floor uh, looks fantastic. I can't believe how how much effort and time that took and resources. Uh, I do not anticipate uh, how much time that would take. And they worked hard on it, uh, scraped by hand on the sides and scrubbed. And, uh, but it looks great. Uh, we did get the new scrubbing machine in uh, to help maintain that. Got some TVs mounted, so we're busting our tails to get stuff done this week. So. Um, the playground, a few pictures here for you. Um, the PTO, the, uh, uh, Andreas said probably the best thing I could have done was just turn the PTO loose on that, that playground. Uh, and Jamie Laffer really took off with that. And uh, Kevin Davis and his crew, they've done a lot of work here to help out. Uh, we got the sprinkler system in. Um, the swing set's been moved. The pipe is... Uh, the border pipe is all around the playground area. Um, there's Nick working on the Lawford working on the, the fence. We put the, the fence around there. The art classes may end up painting that. That's where the gas main is. Uh, it just looks kind of, uh, it looks a lot better this way. And uh, had a big crew here on Sunday on the human afternoon. Why three o'clock? I don't know. Decision. <laughs> uh, we should have started a lot earlier. Uh, moved that rock around uh, so all the rock is distributed and the swing set has been painted. That's all down. So we've got some other equipment coming in. We've got a little low spot out there that Kevin's going to bring some more dirt in and hopefully get that out of there. It's pretty flat out there and all of the water drains from the courtyard across the playground. Uh, it's not an ideal situation, so we'll see how this all plays out. I think that's, that, that's actually the drainage for that goes. And it goes through about the middle. And it does. It goes through, through the, the middle. And to the we're not getting it all the way across. And it's there's about a two-inch drop from where that pipe comes out to where the concrete is on the other side. So We may need to look at doing something different as far as uh, uh, piping that out a different way. Uh, but a lot of water comes out there. So I, th I think the issue right now is we just got too low and they let it out. So we'll try to put some dirt in there and hopefully push that on out. And so the rock has been updated. Here's one of our TVs in the classroom. I don't need a projector screen for that. I'm going to leave the lights on. Some new desks. So just some various updates little things here and there so and that's all i have i believe from my report <coughs> that's all our appreciation for pto Um, let's say uh, we just have personnel. Ten minutes. We can start out with. I don't have a lot. Start so out with ten minutes. Okay. Uh, include uh, Mr. Bernie and Mr. Olive. Just to begin. Fred and I move that we go into executive session to discuss personal matters, check uh, privacy, non elected personnel with the uh, principals. Uh, Mr. Timmons, thank you. I'll second that. Move the second to the executive <coughs> session with the principals and Mr. Mark for 10 minutes. All in favor, right hand. Those same signs. <coughs> Motion carries 5 0. Now, uh, executive session. Um, entertain a motion for the supplemental positions for 2013 14. Mr. 
President, I move the board approve the supplemental positions as listed with Travis Olive being an assistant high school football coach for 2015 14. Is there a second? Yeah, I'll second that. The move and second to approve the supplemental positions as presented with the, addition, with the addition of Travis Olive for the assistant high school football coach 2013 14. All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5-0. The other two motions for Marla and Julian need to correct the uh, clerical error on that contract. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, I move the board approve the employment agreement for Marla Irvine for 2013-14 of the annual salary of $40,100. Second. I move and seconded to approve the employment agreement for Marla for 2013-14 with the uh, amendment of the clerk for $40,100. All in favor, right hand. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5-0. Mr. President, I move the board approve the employment agreement for Marla for 2013-14 with Juliana Owens. For 2013-14, with an annual salary of $40,100. Second. We moved and seconded to approve the employment agreement for Julianne Owens for the 2013-14 school year. With a contract for $40,100. All opposed, all, excuse me, all in favor, right hand. Opposed, same side. Motion carries, 5-0. Mr. President, I move the board approve the contract for Josh Meyer for 2013 to 2015. After Second. Second. We move and second to approve the contract for Josh Meyer for 2013 to 2015 school years. All in favor, right hand. Both same sign. Motion carries by vote. Um, yeah, like I mentioned, we'll have the uh, we'll have a visit uh, school tour in September. Uh, remember, August nineteenth, we'll have a special meeting at seven o'clock. Yeah, and we'll do the budget hearing and in our goal setting and uh, move on from there. Okay. Any other discussion? I'll make the motion to adjourn this. Okay. Move and second to adjourn. All in favor, right hand. Those same sign. Motion 